Hey guys, welcome back to Divine. My name's Nick. I just want to start off and say that I miss you guys. I hope you're staying socially distant. I hope you're staying healthy. And I also want to let you know that if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I try my best each week to text, call, and just contact all you guys. Uh, but if you need anything, please let me know. I'll be the first one to let you guys know as soon as our church is open back up for Thursday nights as well as other activities. For now, we do still have our Sunday service at 930. You can email the church at info at kapahulabible.org um, if you want to come on Sunday. We do seating assignments just to make it easy um, and keep everyone safe, keep you guys safe. Uh, but let's jump into our study tonight. I'm so glad you're here. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this study. I pray that you would just open our eyes, our hearts, and our mind to what you have for us, Lord. Rest your presence on us tonight. I just thank you that you're working and moving just constantly in our lives, Lord. So just make us more aware to your work and your presence, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, hey guys, I wanted to dive into something a little different this week. Um, I had a good conversation with a friend. I won't say his name, um, but one thing that he mentioned to me was he's really been learning a lot about himself recently, um, especially now that he's working. And he was, I think, just a little concerned about the influences um, and just the different friends that may like kind of... Um, push him away to, from the Lord. Uh, and he was just really encouraged that he's really maintained his faith despite kind of being around some of um, more negative influences. And just thinking about that really made me think about this chapter, of course, of the book that we've been going through, Dream Big by Bob Goff. And I'm just going to read a little section of it um, tonight, not as much as we did last time, but just a little part. Um, but let's jump right into it. It's kind of funny. Uh, Jai Jun said it looked like a late night host. Um, with, our, with this just table and setup. Speaking of, um, Don and I uh, built this table, mainly Don. I was there just helping and watching. He taught me a lot, uh, but I'm excited that we have it up here and, and that I've been able to use it. Uh, nonetheless, let's get started. Uh, chapter eight, getting to the new part. It doesn't matter who you were. God cares about who you are becoming. I didn't grow up in the church, and while I speak at a, quite a few faith gatherings, one thing I found to be true is that people don't grow where they are merely informed. They grow where they are fully accepted. Before we go any further, let me get this out on the table where we can talk about it. You are loved and accepted, 100%. No qualifications, no prerequisites. You can't be good enough, smart enough, or nice enough to be loved by God. He decided he would love you before you decided you were interested in loving him back. Even if God is no big deal for you, your life is a big deal to him. You are some of his most creative work ever. Pursuing your ambitions needs to start from a position of acceptance, not compliance. Compliance only lasts until you decide you're not going to comply anymore. We won't be able to get to the best part of, parts of our lives and faith without accessing the best parts of acceptance. Like me, you're easy to love at times and not so much at others. Be honest, you know this is true. You're capable of being both a jerk and a relational genius. And you have immeasurable, untapped potential. If you want to get the worthwhile parts of your life, let's get some of the genius out of the bottle and maybe leave a little more of the jerk inside. Sometimes it's easier to accept someone else than it is to accept yourself. The fix is easy. Give yourself a hug or two on this journey. Even if you're not a hugger, do it anyway. It's not going to make your hair fall out and it probably won't even leave marks. It's said that fish grow to the size of their bowls. You've been stingy about giving and receiving love and acceptance. Get a bigger bowl. You're going to need it. You're probably doing a couple things right and are a hot mess in other areas of your life. Me too. Accept it, but don't delight in it. Don't give lesser angels the room. Don't give your less, lesser angels the room and don't resign yourself to perpetually screwing up. You are in as much need of tremendous love and grace and kindness from God as well as God, from God as we all are. Don't hoard what you're learning about these things. Don't hoard what you're learning about these things either. Learn something new and then get it in, get it in play. It's what we do. Sorry, I can't read tonight. It's what we do with what we know that lets the world see who we really are. Most of us have all the information we need, namely that God is love and his love and and, and he loves and accepts us completely. Have you messed up? Of course. What we need in order to launch forward with our ambitions is a clearer sense of what we would be worth 
in our time to pursue once we embrace an unreasonable amount of grace and acceptance. Along this journey, you're going to have to become a ninja at spotting anything in your way that is counter to God's love and is selling you a bill of goods that makes you question whether you're absolutely loved and accepted by Him. You might think that hate is the enemy of love. It's not. Hate is merely the opposite of love, but it's not its enemy. Hate only has as much power as we give it. Love works the same way. It's fear that stops love in tracks, in its tracks every time. If you think about it for a moment, most of what we do is motivated by either love or fear. The trick is to figure out which one is doing the talking at any particular point in time. As we're figuring out our ambitions, we need to figure out what's been controlling our lives. That can be confusing though, because the voices behind these competing influences of reflection and reaction sound a lot like us. Because they are us. If we take time to listen a little closer with some discernment, we might find out that some of the ideas holding us back didn't actually originate with us. It was a parent or a failed relationship or a teacher or an adversary who stole the microphone and is still doing the talking. We are all reflections of or reactions to the people who have been closest to us. It will take some work to ferret the reasons of underlying our inactions and hesitations, our irrational fears, and our wise conclusions. If you want to get serious about finding or reacting, sorry, if you want to get serious about finding or reactivating ambitions, you've mothballed. This will require taking a purposeful pause from your unusual, I'm, I'm so sorry, I can't read tonight, guys. This will require taking a purposeful pause from your usual activities to understand why you do what you do. And after this chapter, it led me to this verse. And the verse I wanted to share is 1 Corinthians 15, 33. And it reads like this. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Um, friends are really great, right? It's, it's good to have people around you that either support you or even just are there sometimes. Have you ever had a friend where you feel comfortable just sitting in a room with them in silence? Um, and you know, like, you're just happy to be with each other. Um, I think everyone thinks this, or uh, hopefully, but that they have the best friends in the world. I, I really think I do. I have some of the, the best friends I could ever ask for. Um, and I often find myself thanking God for him placing them in my life. Um, it wasn't always that way, though. Um, of course, like in high school and even in college, there was always some, like, negative influences that I still allowed to be in my life for whatever reason. Um... And I wasn't really doing much to try and influence them. And I think that's one reason I kept them around is I kind of kept telling myself, I'm going to be the good influence on them. Like, I want to be the person that, that helps kind of turn them around or, you know, I, I don't want to give up on them. Um, but I would sometimes surround myself then with people that weren't actually helping me grow in my Christian walk, um, but were instead encouraging me to sin. Um, a lot of times I didn't take part in what I thought was wrong. Um, but I would just um, not do anything to push them out of my life, I guess you can say. I would just still allow those influences and voices to be around me, even if I wasn't necessarily engaging in what they were doing. Um, and I was allowing myself sort of to be shaped sort of by those voices competing in my head, if, if that makes sense. Um, and it just kind of got me asking the question in my life of, how do I feel about the people I spend time with? Uh, they say that you are a reflection of the people you spend the most time with. So are you surrounding yourself with people who will build you up in your faith or people who are tearing you down? Our closest friends will either bring wisdom or encouragement or lead you into sin. Um, there's a verse in Proverbs 26 that says, The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble, right? Associate with fools and get in trouble. Sometimes I'm that fool, right? Sometimes we associate with those types of people and we get in trouble. Proverbs 16, 29, a violent person entices their neighbor and leads them down a path that is not good. Psalm 1, 1, first Psalm in the, in the book of Psalms. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor seat, sit in the seat of scoffers. I got these written down. I'm just going to keep reading them to you guys. 
Do not be a friend with one who has bad temper and never keep company with a hot head or you will learn his ways and set a trap for yourself. Um, a violent person entices their neighbor and leads them down a path that is not good. Now, I'm not saying you completely block out every non-Christian or horrible influence in your life. Sometimes it's just not possible, whether it's like a family member or a sibling. Um, but I'm, I am, a, and I am a strong believer in that we keep, we do have relationships with those that are unchurched and those that are that aren't Christian, um, and that we do work on sharing the gospel with them, um, of course. But I think um, a lot of times we keep these people too close. Um, and we actually don't begin to know which voice is the right voice in our head because we keep these people and these negative influences around us that we ha then begin to have trouble discerning what God's voice really is in our life. Um, one way that we begin to work on that is, one, we have to tune in on what does God's voice sound like? And here are some tips of what it sounds like. It sounds like His Word. If it came out of the Bible, right, we know that, that that's God's voice. Another thing it sounds like is wisdom from others that align with the Bible. Um, and it also is, it, it kind of proves itself out in action as well, right? It's, it's, it's faith without deeds is dead, right? Faith without works is dead. So we do also have to have um, wisdom in not only what the words are, but what are the actions that'll, that'll come out of those as well. Uh, so we got to weigh all these things out, and it begins to get to be, uh, be really tough. Um, and I think what Bob Goff was getting at here in the book, too, is that we need to kind of begin to at least, do you even consider or look at those friendships or friends in your life, and how are they impacting you? Um, you know, we talk a lot about people in our lives that are joy suckers, that when we're just around them, it just kind of sucks the joy out of our lives. Um, it kind of is maybe like a negative of, of, of um, these types of people. They never have anything positive to say. Or if you mention something, they're extremely negative on that something or whatever it is. Um, we want to surround ourselves with people like Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron, sharpen iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. And even Proverbs 18, 24 one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Do you really look at the people that are around you and how do they influence you? How do they push you more towards Christ? Or you need to look at that relationship or that person and say, how is it taking you away from Christ and reevaluate? I think, I think so many times we put so much effort into just making ourselves better we don't, don't then look at the influence around us that, is, that are impacting us. Um, and I just think so much that, that so many of us are involved in relationships that we shouldn't be involved in because it doesn't push us more towards Christ. And a lot of us aren't ready to be in a place yet where we're involved with these types of friends to be that gospel, that Jesus influence in their lives. We need to step away for a minute to kind of gather who we really are. And I think that's what Bob is getting at is last week we talked about stripping everything away to, to figure out what do we really believe? What are the things that really matter in our life? And by stripping everything away, it, it lets us look at, well, what are the things we're going to put back in? And the same thing goes with our friends. Um, sometimes we need, to, we need to strip those friends away completely to figure out, one, who we really are, and are these people truly positive influences in your life? If, if there's a type of person in life that you, you always are getting into something with that you know you shouldn't be, I probably would distance your, I would encourage you to distance yourself from that person. Um, and sometimes, hey, sometimes those are the cool kids. Um, and sometimes the, the ones that don't seem as cool usually are, are the wise ones and the ones that we do need to, to invest in those types of relationships with. Um, Man, relationships are hard, life is hard, and, it, and it's difficult analyzing who we are uh, because we really believe who we are a lot of times based on what everyone else is saying. Um, and that's not true. What's true is who God says you are. And the first thing it said in the, in the chapter that we read tonight was um, you're loved and accepted not because of anything that you've done. You can't be smart enough. You can't be good enough for God's love. His love is innately for you, regardless of what you will do or have done or are doing for Him. 
And that should be the baseline of where we begin, is that we're accepted and loved by God, not based off of what we do for Him. And then we can begin to kind of go, uh, you know, outside of that and see, well, what are these other influences that surround me? Um, and what, who do they say I am? Um, you know, everyone has that friend that like only calls you up when they need something, right? And, and you may help them nine out of 10 times. And that one time you don't, um, they treat you poorly because of it. And they forget about all the other times that you've helped them. Uh, a lot of times those friends are really negative and joy suckers in your life. Um, and I would really encourage you to reevaluate those relationships. And then if you actually don't have any friends that really push you more towards Christ, um, that's an issue. And I think that sometimes we push away that we've, we've pushed away those types of friends. So we don't have them anymore because you were that negative influence. So they pushed you away as well. And now you find that you don't have any, does that make sense? And of course, a great starting plate place is um, our church and our family here. Uh, and there's so many people that I know in our, in our ministries and, and just in our church that are really great influences. Um, and I would encourage you to reach out to those people that you know. Um, and also, reach out to me. Uh, I, I want to be there for you. I want to work with you through some of these things. And if you're having trouble kind of breaking away from that, either old self or old friendships, um, let me know and I would love to walk, walk through that with you and journey with you on those things and, and help you uncover really who God has said you to be, um, as well as uh, what he's called you to, what your future and purpose look like. It's not an easy thing to, to reevaluate and uh, restructure things. It's really hard, especially when we built like a certain life or a certain um, foundation in our life. It's hard to tear it down because of all the work that requires to build that new foundation. But that new foundation is going to be sturdy. It's going to be firm. It's going to be uh, what God really wants it to be for you. Uh, so I would encourage you to do that work and to begin that process. So that's what I have for you guys tonight. Um, I'm going to close in prayer, but let me know what you think. We, we kind of have the, a few different ways we've been trying things. We've been doing our live stream and, and videos and things like that. Just let me know what works for you because uh, I want to I do that. Uh, so let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much that you, you not only ask us to reevaluate these relationships, but you're also there with us as we're reevaluating, Lord, to help us to know your voice apart from all the others, Lord, that we would follow that and that we wouldn't allow uh, self-talk, Lord, or the negative influences and voices of others uh, to change what you say about us, Lord. So keep working and moving and transforming us by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Uh, don't forget to comment on the video, um, like it, and please subscribe. That way you stay up to date on all of our um, info, news, and, and just stuff that's happening. So I love you guys. Shoots.